Dear friends, this is Manas Ranjan Panigrahi from Commonwealth Educational Media Center for Asia. I welcome you all to this Life Skill MOOC webinar on leadership in crisis. So, as we know, COVID 19 has uh, spread up all over, all across the world, and uh, leadership playing vital role to reaching to that level and uh, making that control, making uh, real understanding amongst us and moving forward accordingly. So with this uh, note, today we have uh, our speaker with us, Professor G. Padmaja from Center for Health Psychology. She is also Deputy Dean of Student Welfare at University of Hyderabad, India. I welcome you all. And I welcome Dr. Pajmaja to this uh, uh, 25 minutes presentation and discussion to this webinar. So over to Dr. Pajmaja. Thank you, Dr. Manas. Um, it's good meeting you all to this web, uh, webinar. Um, yes, COVID has kept us all at home. Um, in a way, it was anticipated to our thinking about ourselves and what all we ought to do and what we have not been doing, COVID has created a big trauma to many, but at the same time, it is also teaching lessons to us. So every day is a lesson learned, every experience is a lesson learned, and this is a big trauma wherein we build resilience. This is a big trauma for the whole world, wherein we learn ways of Bearing with the adversity, coming out of adversity, and then building up resilience. So yes, Dr. Manas has asked me to talk about uh, leadership during crisis. Um, while the present situation is true, I would also like to remind you that this is a uh, this is going to be a session largely focusing upon engineers and uh, uh, students as well as uh, those who are engineering students, as well as engineers and others who are a part of organization or who wish to be a part of organization. So largely my presentation would be focusing upon the organizational aspect. Nevertheless, we are going to talk about leadership during crisis in general as well, since the situation also demands it, but that can be a discussion towards the end. I hope it's fine, um, Dr. Panigrahi. Yep. Yeah. So let me now start with my presentation on leadership during crisis. Uh, I have my screen. Hope you are all able to uh, yeah. see the screen. Yeah. Yes. So, so we will start a little theoretically, um, considering that we should know about leadership in special situations. We have been, uh, the present module, which you are going to um, see on Sanka level two, is going to be about recent theories of leadership, which starts from today. However, at the same time, today, I'm going to talk about a little more um, than whatever has been presented to you in the module. Well, leadership during crisis is important in the current times. And from an organizational context, let's talk about what is leadership. Leadership is an art of motivating a group of people to achieve common good. It's, it's a, it, in fact, it's a, it plays an important role during crisis events, for example, by maintaining a positive organizational culture. And then what is crisis? Crisis in general is a rare, significant and public situation which creates highly undesirable consequences for the enterprise and its stakeholders and requires from the business leaders immediate corrective action. Crisis involves negative events, according to Brockner and James, and elicits negative emotions and mm -hmm. corresponding behaviors as, uh, yes, yes. So negative events and corresponding the uh, behavioral um, uh, patterns as well. Now, what does element, what does crisis consist of? What are the various elements in crisis? Basically, it would be a threat to the organization from an organizational point of view. Now, apply it to our general life situations as well. It can be a threat either to the organization or in general. It has an element of surprise. It's not as though it's anticipated always. And 
very quickly we have to come up with a decision and it has a short decision time. And crisis is a process of transformation, according to Bennett, where the old system can no longer be maintained. Hence, when it says the fourth defining quality of crisis is a need for change and immediate change that. Remember, we have a short decision time usually. So there are certain types of crisis. Like, for example, we have um, anticipated events, which is, which is a part of routine crisis, some known risks. You know that there is a point of element of risk somewhere in a task that you are doing or in a, um, in a particular decision that you have taken. Organizations then can plan and develop. They can preempt. They can be, uh, they can be proactive and they can develop procedures um, accordingly. I have given some examples over here. Like, for example, when you manufacture a particular product and then you are there as a part of the leadership, you take care of the safety plans. And then, like, for example, when food companies have some problems, I'll be sharing a particular case study with you. They need to recall plans when, 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 the plan, when there is a crisis which evolves out of the decision which is taken. And then when it comes to companies, there may be security plans which may be necessary as a part of their routine crisis. Now, novel crisis, on the other hand, involves risks which exhibit unusual frequency and impact. It's not known. It cannot be predicted. It's unpredictable and it erupts suddenly. It may not be, though you partially know about it sometimes, you may not think that this is going to become a crisis. So organizations typically don't have plans for such events. So what happens is sometimes two, three elements or events combine together. There may be a confluence of certain events which strike off at the same time. It may be economical, it may be uh, with relation to the safety, it may be much more. But it may be a, a, a stake, um, the reputation may be at stake. Or they may be simply too big or unusual to be imagined. So crisis can be routine, crisis can be novel, and it is during the time of novel crisis that a leadership becomes very important and has to be uh, very carefully planned, very carefully executed as well. Now, one more type of classification which Lerbinger in 1997 has given was natural disaster, technological crisis, confrontation, malevolence, organizational misdeeds, workplace violence, rumors, terrorist attacks, man-made disasters. Now, we cannot at the same time underestimate this impact of natural disaster. At several points in history, you will see that natural disasters have been crisis situations which men have not been prepared for and had to handle then and there spontaneously. It may take some time, but you have to come up with decisions. It is the kind of uh, crisis which evolves out of natural disasters. And this is where the leadership and uh, the, uh, the impact of leadership counts a lot. Now, Crisis has been defined already. And then what happens during crisis? There are five phases of crisis according to James. These five phases of crisis, I have, you are seeing it on the um, PowerPoint uh, screen. Each is important in itself. And each phase contains an obstacle that a leader must overcome to improve the structure and or operations of an organization. Like for example, signal detection being able to understand the signals when there is a crisis which is erupting or about to evolve then comes preparation and prevention like i said in routine crisis there is an element of preparation and prevention but what with normal crisis even with normal crisis i'm repeatedly hence telling you that leadership is important in terms of genuineness being proactive being spontaneous being able to see ahead and have a vision of what is happening the analysis of the situation has to be such that even during the crisis even when novel crisis erupts then and there uh, there should be a preparation and prevention for damage control then comes containment and damage control once it starts, once the crisis starts, how, how far can you limit it? A crisis has evolved. It has come into picture. People are experiencing it. So can we altogether uh, delete it? It cannot be deleted just like that. But what we can do is once it starts, there will be an impact. 
So how far can you contain it? How far can you have limits? How can you limit it? How can you prevent the damage uh, to spread all over? So damage control. And then comes business recovery. Remember, we are talking from an organizational context. So obviously, there will be a lot of uh, um, impact upon the business, impact upon the output, in, impact upon the productivity. So business recovery will be the next. And in all, we should not forget that learning becomes very important. Now, having learned that we have to deal with a crisis in a particular way, with success, if there is a success story, there is something to learn. But when there is no success or not much of success, still there is something to learn. So learning is one, one more important part. That means you are ready for any other uh, novel crisis, which we may not anticipate. You will uh, psychologically be prepared for it. Now, coming to the leadership, what is it which is expected out of a leader? There are certain tasks which are expected out of a leader during crisis. The leader is supposed to lead decisively and he or she is supposed to continuously analyze the situation. How far, how far did I succeed? How far did we together as a team succeed in handling the situation? And how far are we, ab are we able to succeed in moving ahead and coming out of the crisis? So this kind of analysis and for the step ahead, uh, uh, some more planning, all these are required. So con continuous analysis is very important. And then a leader has to actively communicate. This is what would be expected out of a leader. A leader has to actively communicate with the team. It is team together which is going to deal with the crisis. And leader alone does not become important. It is not his, his, his uh, uh, popularity which matters over there. It is more a teamwork which matters over there. And he has to be in touch with the others, other team members. And then to be ready for the unexpected. Unexpected is something which the crisis itself is unexpected very often. And even within the unexpected, there may be unexpected at every step. And to drive towards application-oriented plans. Whatever plans are there, how, how far can they be theoretical? They have to be applied. So application-oriented plans are very important. And when such crisis situation happens, there are certain qualities which are expected out of the leader. Like, for example, understanding people. Remember, we work as a team. And uh, coming, coming to the crisis, uh, which uh, Dr. Manas Panigrahi has been talking about right now, which we are all undergoing across the world, we should see that, we should understand that during the crisis, initially, maybe there is planning, but over a period of time, there may be a possibility of not feeling not understood. If that is the case, then that means the leadership has to, has to, has to be very, uh, very um, careful over there. The leaders have to be very careful over there and leadership qualities have to be very carefully executed over there. There, there should be a feeling that the people are being understood. Then... Sometimes there may be a lot of criticism, so ability to face criticism, being able to delegate the responsibilities, showing enthusiasm, being judgmental enough, but not with people, but with the situations. And judging as to what the next step should be. Then a vision about the future, an integrity, emotional intelligence, and acceptance of challenges. All these are required for a, for a leader in order to succeed. So crisis leadership has, now all these qualities which are expected and the tasks which have to be dealt with create a crisis leadership now. So during crisis, the leadership has to take care of two phases. One is the emergency phase where the task is to stabilize the situation and buy some more time. And the second is the adaptive phase where we tackle the underlying causes of the crisis and build the capacity so that you thrive in a new reality now. So, well, this is one of the models, a crisis leadership competency model, um, which, uh, um, uh, which talks about what are the various uh, issues involved over there, what are the various competencies which are required. So in this, the competencies which are expected are, of course, the team leadership being able, being able to bring the team together, like I have mentioned, the communication, and then not losing the connectivity, establishing and strengthening the connectivity between people with the situation and among people. Then having courage and perseverance and also disseminating it to the others and credibility and decisiveness, which I'm emphasizing again and again and spontaneity and emotional effectiveness, not succumbing to emotions, subjective emotions or overreacting to the emotions of the others, but being able to remain objective 
and balanced in terms of emotions and an integrative thinking. Many people may talk about many things during crisis, each for their own, but then being able to integrate good ideas and putting them into action and then situational awareness. All these are supposed to be the competencies. Now coming to the types of leadership, which I have not touched much in my uh, present module, one of the leaderships which, which is usually successful during crisis can be servant leadership. And here, uh, unlike the traditional leader and the power leader, a servant leader shares power, puts the needs of the employees first, helps people develop and perform as highly as possible. So here the main elements are service, collaborative, authority, mentoring, and foresight. Very easy example that we can remember is Abraham Lincoln. So in servant leadership, if you are seeing, uh, uh, as, as you see on the slide, which I have shown you, it's, it works very well in transformational leadership and democratic leadership. You know why it doesn't work in the others. Because the task emphasis is high as well as the uh, people emphasis is, is high over here. Here people emphasis is high and here both task and people emphasis is high. Now what happens when there is a good uh, servant leadership? The emotional health of the employees would be good because one-to-one -one communication will be there. There is a sharing and the uh, uh, employees can uh, express themselves in workplace. Any examples that, that you can give from current context? Maybe after this, during the discussion, we can go for this. Then coming to another leadership, which is well discussed in recent times, the level five leadership, which Jim Collins has proposed. He started looking at 1,435 companies, out of which he felt 11 companies are truly great ones and they're all headed by these level five leaders. What are the qualities? They have humility, don't seek success for their own glory. Success is necessary so that team and organization together will strive. Here the importance is upon the organization and the success of the organization. Share credit for success, does not take it all for themselves. Accept blame for mistakes is a great leader. Standing in the front line and taking the blame, whereas when it comes to credit, it is a shared success. Um, often shy, but fearless when it comes to make decisions, especially the ones that most other people may consider really risky. Now, these are the levels. Level one is being a highly capable individual, being, making quality contributions, useful levels of knowledge and uh, necessary skills. And level two is contributing team member, using knowledge and skills so that the team succeeds. And the third is a competent manager who organizes the group effectively so that you achieve specific goals and objectives. Effective leader then he is one who galvanizes a department or organization to meet performance objectives and achieve a vision. Now, great leader, this is the, till, till now, many of the leadership models that we have been discussing earlier may meet these criteria, but great leader is one who is a unique blend of humility and will. The pyramid goes like this. You start from highly capable individual over to contributing team member to uh, competent manager to effective leader. Many of the models may cover till here, but the executive is what I said, the great leader, the final leader. So let's very quickly go for a um, uh, case study. A level five leader is ambitious and uh, wants a success for the company. So Sam Walton, uh, level five leader, had unique and charismatic personality. And when he was diagnosed with, uh, with cancer, uh, people were wondering what would happen to Walmart. So Sam Walton wanted to prove that his company is bigger than himself. It is not a person who determines the success of company. It is a company of which he is a part. And it is a company which has to be successful. So he wanted to show the com this to, the com to everyone. So he chose one David Gloss, who was non-charismatic to succeed him. But again, the company, so he wanted to show to people, it is not just the person alone, but it is so many things. Similarly, a success story of Pepsi, where uh, they, 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 they were blamed for the, uh, their product, but then again, they have dealt, it, dealt with it very strongly. So is the case with Johnson & Johnson Tylenol um, case in 1982, where uh, again, the CEO appeared on television and news conferences and informed consumers of co companies' actions. They took immediate action. And today, again, Tylenol came back and swiftly bounced back to the pre-crisis uh, um, uh, credit, credibility, whatever it had had. Now again, there may be um, the usual Bhopal disaster example that many people come up, come up with, with respect to an unsuccessful leadership. Now, even within our own country, let us talk about some leadership uh, 
success stories. Um, we all know the Konkan man. Um, e, e, e Sridharan, the Konkan uh, Metro man, and uh, the Konkan Railway and uh, Delhi Metro man, who is supposed to be uh, one of the very successful leaders. So, in this, in his uh, leadership, when everything was going, uh, you know, in, uh, as the second para shows, um, even when there was fuel shortage in several countries around the globe, including India, only project which managed to stand up against all odds was the Konkan Railway, which was being construction of Konkan Railway, which was being headed by him. So such is the capability of the leader who even among crisis situations can lead his task very effectively and successfully. Hitharan was one example, uh, the Metro man, um, who I was saying was, a, um, was an example of uh, crisis leadership. Um, so considering all these, now um, in, in my module related to recent leadership uh, um, uh, theories, I have talked to you about several types of recent leader, leadership uh, theories. Now today, considering the crisis situations that we have, uh, we are to discuss today, I have also added two more leadership patterns, the most recent ones. That so, I think we can open it for discussion now, Dr. Yep. Manas. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Padmaja, and now this is uh, open for discussion. So uh, anybody can ask any question and queries or any experience you want to share with us and others. So that is uh, very beautiful for this discussion. So this is open for discussion, please. You can switch on video also, no problem. Yeah, good morning, ma'am. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, ma'am, uh, so uh, as you have given this uh, successful success stories of famous uh, personalities. Mm -hmm. So in this current scenario, we find uh, people tackling with COVID-19. Uh, COVID so I think that uh, there is a tremendous effort from uh, Mr. Modi. And uh, so what could be the thing like uh, you could have done uh, uh, to stop this current crisis? Like uh, we find some kind of situations. Surinder, right? Teacher. Yeah, ma'am. Surinder ji, it's like this. Yeah. Um, one uh, point that I want to mention is, um, um, right now, we have been talking from an organizational context at large. But at the same time, I told you that all the uh, points that I have discussed in the point can be applied to the general life as well. It's not just re related to one organization. Yes, government, yeah. Yeah, government our uh, local governments and our uh, um, national uh, level efforts have been a tremendously tremendous. They have been doing a lot of putting in a lot of effort. What could have been done is not what we have to think about now, right now. Whatever is being done is showing its effects. So what else can be done? What can be added to it as a uh, citizen, as someone who can, uh, who, who is a part of this country, we can have our own um, inputs. And like I said, the quality of a leader would be integrity. So which one to take in and which one may not be taken in depends upon several committees that they have and a higher level uh, filtering that they do. So what else could be done? Well, that's already is being done because we know that there are high level medical, from medical point of view, from psychosocial point of view, from a, uh, from a, right from the grassroots roots level, people are trying to be reached and held. Like I said, one of the qualities which I said uh, is important with the leader is being able to communicate, being able to connect. These are being done at every point. At, at every point. So I think we have to wait and see how this crisis is going to be uh, dealt with completely. It is being dealt with. So how it is going to be completely dealt with? Let us wait and watch. Yeah, Pooja. We are unable to hear yeah. Pooja's uh, voice. And uh, so anyone please, uh, please unmute your uh, mic and ask question. Yeah, ma'am. Please. Yeah, 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 yes, sir. Yeah. 
so ma'am as you discussed like some tasks during crisis uh, about lead uh, decisively and continuously analyze uh, communicate uh, ready for unexpected and drive toward application and oriented uh, so i think these are the wonderful tasks which you have mentioned uh, so should really appreciate uh, the things which are been done by our government and the the discussion which we, which went on by you ma'am thank you for mm -hmm. that uh, wonderful discussion so i think that uh, moksha gunda misheshwarya which you discussed earlier uh, might be a kind of like which we have to recall once again sorry moksha gunda misheshwarya uh huh yes yes yeah the one the one which you discussed is uh, i think is an icon uh, stands so used like a touchstone for us all the time correct <laughs> Yeah. So this this is what is expected. If I if I don't I mean I I, I guess uh, Dr. Manas will also agree with me. This is what is expected, sir. Um, I yep. think all of us can come up with one example which we think is appropriate um, during crisis leadership. Absolutely. Yes. Charles. You, Charles sir. wants to ask question. Charles, raise hand. Charles. Charles, you raise hand. Please ask question. May I may I unmute your mic? Yeah, now you can ask question, Charles. Good, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. I want to thank you very much. I enjoyed the discussion. Great. My, yes, it, my is really not a question. I want to appreciate the whole arrangement. Thank you. So it makes me feel great. I'm talking from Nigeria, discussing yeah. with you in India and there. It's really wonderful. Great. Thank you. Yes, the response you gave to the first question also was appealing. You know, the it is a it's a case that involves so many organizations, as you have said, and the one of most of the qualities of leadership. There is no one individual that can have all the qualities, but the ability to delegate is also a sign of a good leadership, which so many governments are taking it to during this crisis that is affecting the whole world. So the COVID-19 issues is not just one locality, it's all over the world. So being able to harness all the sectors involved is also a good sign of lead, good leadership. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Uh, so um, uh, Dr. Padmaja, you want to reflect on this or add on this? Yeah, um, like I said, in one of the uh, slides which I have shown, uh, um, uh, I have talked about certain qualities. A good leader will be able to delegate tasks to his or her uh, subordinates or people around, to his team. Let us not use the word subordinates, maybe it is his team, his, his, his crew, his team or her team. So once a task is assigned, once they are trusted with the task and sure the delegation of the work which is given will be executed properly. In one of the leadership theories which I have talked about in my um, modules which are presented on Central Level 2, this has been discussed extensively. It is not just that the leader should be trustworthy, he, should all, he or she should also be able to trust his team members. Only then delegation of tasks can be done. And once the task is delegated, that confidence in uh, um, the, uh, the team member, the, the colleague, has to be shown in terms of, in many ways, of course, not in just one way. It can be shown in many ways. Then there will be a reinforcement and yes, the task will be executed properly. And who to assign the task to, when to assign the task to, how to assign the task. All these, again, are a part of leadership qualities. And a crisis leader would be spontaneous in being able to identify the right person and giving the right uh, task, uh, um, um, allotting the right task. So any other? Samuel, please. OK. Yeah, yeah. good day, everyone. Thank you. Actually. Mine is, mine is a question. I'm just uh, wondering what kind of uh, leadership can one expect from uh, a situation whereby maybe a medical doctor is uh, made to head uh, a transport uh, ministry or a lawyer, a barrister is made uh, to provide leadership 
to a ministry of energy and power, like uh, we sometimes have in some government around the world, where you have a mismatch. Is that not a case of a crisis in the waiting? Mm. Can I yeah. answer? Yeah, yeah. please, brother. So, uh, uh, did I get it right? If I have to summarize what you have asked, the training that the leader might have received was, would have been different, and the kind of task which is being executed, may expected and to be executed, is different. Is that what you mean, Samuel? Ji? Yes. Yeah. So, um, yes, there are many situations where what you learn might be different and what you execute may also be different. But at the same time, let me also tell you, a leader should be somebody who can extend his learning. He is not as though he is not going, he is going to stop learning at some point in time and then limits himself to only one particular field. Once you go into a leadership position, leadership is more than just a technical, uh, uh, like, like from the beginning we have been talking about leadership, especially with respect to engineers in our context of uh, SEMCA level 1 and SEMCA level 2 course, life skills course. Leadership can, need not be limited to your technical expertise. Leadership is more than that. It involves soft skills, it involves hard skills. It involves both technical expertise, but at the same time also being able to understand and look at things from a larger perspective. If you limit yourself, if, if a person who is in a leadership position limits himself to only his technical expertise, then his leadership will also be limited. Whereas a leader should not have any boundaries or limits. And the leader, remember our Abdul Kalam ji, remember many people who have been highly successful. They have been well-versed with many, many things. They don't limit themselves to only whatever field they have been uh, um, uh, technically expert from. So extension of learning, getting the, that's why I said, analyzing the situation constantly. Understand, not only executing whatever has been given, but understanding why and what. And yes, a leader will have a team which to which he is going to delegate the tasks, and it is not he himself is going to physically go and do those tasks. He will assign the tasks to the necessary people, and his task is to coordinate task to the necessary people and his task is to coordinate very quickly decided of course. So in this about integrating, being able to take right inputs from the others and integrating them and using them, using the experience of whatever has happened all these years or being able to be proactive, having a vision about the future. All these are important qualities of people. So while technical expertise is one, there are so many other qualities which are required. Thank you. Any other any other question or experience? I just uh, wanted to request uh, all of you. Can you can you share your experience in this crisis? Being a being an employee, being a teacher, being a student, being a uh, executive of any organization. Uh, how you are performing your leadership style in your organization in this crisis period? Please, if anybody can share your experiences. Share your experiences. Please share your experiences. You, uh, I know you are uh, looking after the teacher education. If I remember rightly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir. Please, please uh, share yeah. your experiences in this crisis period. How you are handling this crisis period, being a leader of uh, uh, yeah. June in India. Yeah, so the only one thing which we can do is that uh, whatever that which is under our purview or within our boundary, so we can put our maximum efforts to overcome the, this problem. Yeah, actually, um, Surinderji is uh, about uh, teaching. Uh, uh, I mean, being a part of uh, several uh, forums wherein um, social help is being given, teachers play a major role. As I think uh, uh, they are closer to some uh, um, one is, of course, through children, but now, right now, 
everything is uh, we are under lockdown and we we cannot uh, uh, move out but at the same time you know being able to educate the children and also talking to the parents sometimes helps with respect to certain uh, for example right now regarding the hygiene and all teachers are playing um, at grassroots level teachers are playing um, if you read uh, the media reports and uh, several other reports the information sources of information teachers are playing there as well during this time of crisis i would, now i would like to request uh, mr uh, uh, alamin alamin you you are able to hear me you please uh, ask your any query or uh, any experience you want to share with us thank you uh, good morning and have a good day uh, i am from bangladesh uh, so i am living in dhaka uh, i have a question that i want to share something that uh, i i am working a drop in center project in dhaka who is uh, working for street and working children uh, for 400 children in dhaka so this time our uh, uh, dhaka city is just locked down so for that uh, the the family is not able to uh, collect or uh, earn something for that so i and our organization and our student group uh, bangladesh youth initiative called the name so we organized for uh, 400 families uh, monthly for one month we we are giving them 5000 taka and for that we are managed so many uh, people so we managed uh, from our family members from our friends from our uh, connected people so it's it's good to uh, uh, feel uh, a um, peace that we able to this this is not our project system we are just without project we uh, mobilize the fund from our society so we are uh, now we are, i am working in satira district and other joshua district so in this time i work in three district for mobilizing fund and giving the uh, the families those who are not able to earn in this uh, crisis moment uh, and i mobilize uh, 100 uh, mentor and 100 leader in uh, the education institute thank you thank you alamin uh, yeah um, padmaja you want to reflect on uh, alumni's uh, uh, initiative and uh, their their way of leadership kind of thing which can be understand and to our all other audience yes manish so that's a good uh, experience that uh, alumni has uh, shared in fact uh, in in our modules we have repeatedly i mean at, at several points in time we have mentioned leaders maybe may evolve it's not that you are named a leader and you are sent into an organization or out into the society then such social uh, when there is a work which is done for the, for a social cause and when there is a concern generally like we talked about the servant leader doesn't just think about himself he talks he thinks about everyone else does not take the credit does not mean to take also uh, the credit does not bother about the credit but when it comes to blame he will be in the front line so such leaders evolve when such activities happen and you take the lead and you take a group of people along with you you don't call yourself leader you are a leader nevertheless you are a leader but you have people along with you so i think uh, leadership evolves according to the situation however not every person who may be in the situation may evolve it is that uh, initiative like i said among the so many qualities that i have that we have been talking about the tendency towards taking initiative handling challenges knowing the risks under understanding the risks at the same time handling the risks dealing with the risks being able to connect the people and having a collection of people combining the efforts and putting in the right uh, kind of action plan well that is what that is how leadership evolves so i think yes leaders can be can evolve they are not born very often not always we had this discussion at length in our forums in our uh, uh, level 1 and uh, during our level 1 uh, programs right so okay. yep. that's a good initiative alam thank you very much uh, we have with us uh, uh, brinda devi uh, i can just request brinda devi can uh, speak and share your experiences or any questions you want to ask brinda devi please
yes brinda devi please yeah good morning madam good morning thank you very much sir for taking initiation taking conducting webinars and all for, for us thank you so much ma'am you you can share your experience in this crisis how you are managing uh, leadership is, is a great part of our life but we know all these uh, crisis so taking examples of great persons and all thank you sir great thank you very much uh, uh, i now i would like to request uh, mr uh, Love Chand. May I ask uh, Brinda Devi one question, Doctor? Yes, yes, sure, sure, sure. Please, please continue. Yeah, well, it's just a part of our discussion. See, we have been talking about this leadership, and we have been talking about application of leadership both in terms of organizations as well as daily life, considering the crisis situation that we are all in. So, um, Brinda Devi ji, how uh, relevant do you feel? Uh, such uh, discussions are in our daily life so ma i agree madam but it is uh, in our daily life we are facing some problems about in leadership part so hmm. do you think some of these will be helpful to you in your daily life what madam Okay. You think some of these skills which are being discussed in our module are helpful to you in your daily life? I couldn't couldn't understand, madam. Brinda Devi, do do you think uh, these discussions, these uh, experiences, like we've been here and we are now discussing, you are sitting at your home, we are sitting at home. and everybody is there in their own respective home and uh, respective places and we are talking about the leadership and uh, do you think this discussions did these experiences really helping you in this uh, day to day life which is uh, you are leading now yes sir yes, yes, sir i agree sir so how how you how do you feel that uh, the uh, kind of experience which is helping you Uh, in our daily life the leadership is main role by taking the uh, profis profession yes so yes so i am in teaching profession sir yeah. so to guide the students and so leadership is main role i think Great. it is great an important role uh, yes yes madam yes yeah great 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 great, great. I think Din Dinesh Kumar uh, can speak something. Dinesh Kumar ji, please. Okay, then then I uh, then I am coming to uh, uh, yeah yeah Lava Chand raise hand. Lava Chand, please. Lava Chand, please. Okay, Asis, Mr. Asis can speak. Asis is also raised hand. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, please, Asis. Asis. Yes, sir. good good morning to all. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you to all for uh, such a good lecture. So, uh, before some time back, you have asked the experience of Rinda Devi. So, I would like to share my experience during this crisis. Actually, I am working as a teacher educator with one organization. so uh, before that it was uh, my responsibility to support my team in uh, uttar pradesh haryana tamil nadu and west bengal these four states were uh, responsible for me to support my team uh, my teachers team as well as the uh, operation team to ensure the academics there uh, but during this crisis what happened that we are not directly uh, connected so i am taking this uh, thing as a positive opportunity for me because till today uh, right now i am connected with all individual teachers over the phone with the help of this technology and uh, we are communicating to each other we are regular 
daily daily basis uh, i am connecting with them and uh, giving directly indirectly feedback to them some somehow indirect feedback on the whatsapp write something and those things whatever their academic issues like related to lesson plans teaching learning material whatever the family kind of issues they are facing we are also doing the counseling for them that they will be able to cope up with the same so uh, if we are talking about this crisis so definitely i must uh, say that this has given me uh, an opportunity to know my more power and make this opportunity me more competent with the technology actually and uh, uh, about the leadership uh, i'm sure i'm not directly uh, working as a leader but uh, as uh, from today's uh, lecture with the help of padmaza ma'am so i came to know that indirectly i am in the role of leadership i am working as a leader because directly i am connected with 285 teachers in the four state different states the teachers who are sitting on the border of uh, bangladesh the teacher who are sitting uh, in tamil nadu it's very near to the sri lanka so they they are also sharing their experience so this is a good uh, time going on with me i am engaged full day for the 10 to 12 hour i am engaged with the teachers but uh, thank you ma'am for uh, this was i opened a lecture for me that i am in the leadership role this was yeah. my understanding sir yeah thank you thank you very much <laughs> Sar sarang wants to speak sarang uh, can i can i see let us what uh, ashish is talking is padma ji yeah so ashish sharma ji Uh, that was yes, a good experience sir. sharing um, let me tell you when it, when there is a crisis situation every individual will have a leadership role to play in their own way uh, right ma'am coordinating with 280 people you are being a leader in one one way it implementing technology looking ahead and advancing in leaps and bounds today we are able to reach every nook and corner of the world sitting at one place like this mm. on zoom but then you know that our mobile technology has improved so much that we are able to reach out to people everywhere most of the places except the places where there is no connectivity so so far as possible if we are able to disseminate proper information like we were talking about then yes we are helping several people isn't it educating one person will we will be able to educate many others and then when they are in a crisis situation when they want to um, share with you their own worries and problems you being able to stand along with them and being supportive to them is in itself yeah, you are uh, you are you are playing an important role so anyone who is working like you or me um, when we where we have where where we apply psychosocial intervention i'm sure teachers and other uh, people who are connected with the society anyone who is connected with the society will have a role to play so many yes, of that can be leaders in our own way Right. Yes, ma'am. You are right. Actually, uh, uh, what you said that uh, anywhere in the India, as my organization, Bharti, I am working in Bharti Foundation uh, as a teacher educator. So this is uh, this organization working in the uh, rural area. So all the teachers are in the rural area, and before some before this crisis, most of them were asking that there is network problem, there is connectivity problem, there is some some kind of problem, but. after this uh, start uh, from from the 21st of uh, march now everybody is connected they are sharing on whatsapp their problems they are connecting with me over the video and they are also talking with me and no one has asked me till date that we are facing the network problem so as i so as, this I, is such... as i said in the beginning of our session today while uh, mobile while while this uh, crisis is harming a lot all of us and then creating a trauma yeah, it also improve the bonding between people everyone yes. is concerned <laughs> about everyone else today so that bonding has been developed so so long as we are all supportive of each other then everyone in this chain of support system is a leader in it in himself or us right? true yeah. true ma'am thank you yes. thank you thank very you. much uh, now we are in the uh, close to our closing time of this uh, session and uh, i would like to extend my uh, thanks to uh, dr padmaja and uh, 
say, give us the uh, uh, quantum of time and spare of time with us and uh, enlighten us uh, re relating to the leadership, particularly in the crisis period. And it uh, helps us in our profession, definitely. And uh, all of us will uh, engage ourselves adequately and uh, dealt with this kind of crisis uh, or any kind of crisis in the in future or uh, any respect. So uh, thank you very much, learners, uh, dear. You can uh, go back to the uh, portal. Uh, the quizzes are waiting for you and uh, more discussions are waiting for you. And this uh, last week uh, uh, module, uh, you can discuss through forum with uh, uh, Professor Padmoja regarding to more and more about the leadership and different kind of leadership style in different situations. Thank you very much joining with us. Thank you very much. And we will again uh, meet in another uh, session, which will be uh, scheduled on Sunday probably. And I will, I will communicate through announcement and we will meet again. Thank you very much for joining with us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, all of you. Yeah.